Welcome students to Unit 8 Area in Solids Lesson 8.9 Similarity and your very last preview video of the entire year. You should be towards the end pages right here. You should be looking at this on Cinco de Mayo or the 6th of May. Give me a second. I'll do that in Spanish as well. Seis de Mayo. And uh, prior to class on the 7th or the 8th, don't forget a location, date, time, and a parent signature sign-off. Let's do a recap of a single problem here. We're going to do shade, trace, perimeter, base, equations, circle, plug, chug. Say it with me. Shade, trace, perimeter, base, equations, circle, plug, chug. Shade, base, perimeter, shade, trace, perimeter, base, equations, circle, plug, chug. So let's take a look here. We're going to find both the surface area and the volume of this cone. Step number one, let's shade and find the base. That's step number one here. Shade. Shade the base. Trace the base. Shade, trace. Now we're going to find our perimeter is right here that's going to be d pi and you just walk it over and that's 10 pi and that's our perimeter also known as circumference now we're going to do the base base is pi r squared finish that up pi squared pi and 25 pi. Our units here are units squared, and our units here are just units. So far what we have, let's label it, box and label that. That's our capital B, that's our base, box, and we already have that, that is our circumference. Let's label what else we have here. We trace the 15. That's not the true height. That's our slant height. We will need it, however. And our true height is unknown. So on that note, we're going to need to find that. That's X. It's 15. And that's 5. We do 5 squared plus x squared equals 15 squared. The shortcut for this is x is going to equal to 15 squared minus 5 squared under the square root sign. Now be very careful if you use that shortcut. The square root sign does not cancel the squares there because of that minus sign. Wait a moment for you to write that down, and then I'll show you how to do it on a calculator in one step here. So on your calculator, you can go 15 squared. Why don't you follow with me, even though I'm doing it here. Minus 5 squared, hit the equal sign, and that's going to get you 200. And then we square root. We're going to take that to the first decimal place, and that's going to be 14.1. And that's going to be our true height. Now, our surface area of our cones, total surface area, you copy that from this page right here that you should have filled out, but we'll be going over it. That is. Circumference times slant height over 2 plus 1, and we have a base. So ready? Our surface area, we set the plug sub, that circumference there, that's going to be 10 pi times our slant height, which is 15. over 2 plus 1 base, which we already have, as 25 pi. 
Let's track with me here. I'm going to put 2 into 10, and that's 5. 5 times 15, that's 75 pi plus 25 pi. So our cone surface area of our cone here is going to be 100 pi unit squared. And some of you don't look like pi form, so I'll show you it in decimal form too. That's 314.16, and that's the approximation. This was, would be called exact terms, and this would be called an approximation. Now you write your volume equation. Volume equals base times height over 3, and this one is true height. Base we already have, it's 25 pi. Our true height is 14.1 over 3. It's going to be 25 times 14.1. Divided by 3, it's 117.5 pi units cubed, and then decimal form, 369.14. Units cubed. Once again, that's exact terms, and that is an approximation. Why don't you take just one minute, and since I did this with you, it's very important that you learn to internalize this process. This is very detailed. I'm going to set the timer for a minute, and I just want you to verbally go back through what process did we use in order to ultimately find the surface area and the volume of a cone. One minute, verbally rehearse this yourself. Go. All right, we're coming down to our final concept, and we're actually revisiting a fairly um, simple concept, and that is the concept of similarity. The slang of similarity is same shape, different size, things that have the same shape, different size. The technical definition of similarity is scare, S-C-A-R-E. And this is shapes and now solids, Similarity means we're going to have congruent angles. That gives us the same shape, but ratios, which are equal. Not equations, equal. Got too many equations on the brain here. They're equal. So similarity means congruent angles, ratios equal. Similarity means congruent angles, ratios equal. Similarity means congruent angles. Ratios equal. So to check if something is similar in solid, we're going to focus in on ratios being equal, and we're going to test it. So let's test a couple here. I'm going to do two, and then you're going to do two.
Okay, ready? Let's do two. Well, I want you to circle the three and the 15. Let's draw a ratio arrow. That's going to be three goes into 15 five times. So that's a one to five ratio. Now, you check the others. There's eight and 40. I'm going to circle. Eight goes into 40. That's one to five ratio as well. Circle the five and the 25. Five goes into 25, one to five times as well. So this first set of solids, we would say, yes, they are similar. You check all the edge lengths, and if the ratios are equal, they're similar. Let's try this one here. Okay, make sure you're comparing the same thing. We're doing slantite, slantite, left to right. I'm going to go 42 to 6. That's going to be a 7 to 1 ratio. 56 to 8. 7 goes into 56 8 times. I mean, excuse me, 8 goes into 56 7 times. This is also a yes, they are similar. I want you to check these two. I'm going to give you a minute on the timer. Check both of these on your own. All righty, let's check. Uh, let's go 9 to 12. 3 goes in here 3 times. 3 goes in there 4 times. There's 15 and 25. 5 goes in here 3 times. And 5 goes in there 5 times. And 9 and 12 this way. 3 goes in there three times, three goes in there four times. Notice we have a ratio that does not work here, so we would write they are not similar. Let's check on the right. 20 to 100, that's a one to five ratio. And 10 to 100, that is a one to 10 ratio. So both of these were a no, they are not similar. Hopefully you got the same answer there. Okay, now once you establish something is similar, you're gonna get a very interesting thing going on with ratios and dimensions. Ratios and dimensions. But first, we're going to start with a little predictor here, and I really want you to play along here, okay? Imagine that we have a single unit cube. So, what I want you to do is go ahead and do a little bracket here. That's a one unit cube. So, put a one U there. And now you double the edge length, so put a two U there. Now, answer this before we go on. If you double the edge length, which we did, just the edge length right here, what do you think happens to the surface area and the volume? I'd like you to actually predict if we double the edge length, just the length of all the edges, what do you think is going to happen to both the area and volume? Please write a prediction there. I want you to compare the predictions to the reality once we do the work. I am not going to fill that in for you. 
double the edge length, what happens to area and volume? I'm going to be silent for about 20 seconds. Okay, let's put your predictions to that test. Whatever you wrote here, let's see what actually goes on. So let's start with what we originally did. Our skew factor is side to side ratio. And here we don't have anything to work out. It's a one to two ratio. So our side to side ratio is one to two. We're in the first dimension. Okay, ready? Okay. Now, let's take a look when we go to two dimensions. Remember, two dimensions is area. The surface area of the small, we can just do this by prediction. This edge is considered that blue edge right there that I just shaded. That's going to be one unit squared. And if it's a die, you know there's six of them. Right? There's six faces there. So the surface area of the small is going to be six units squared. Now, we double the edge length. That means each face has now two by two units. And two times two, that means there are four units squared per face. And if there's four units squared, and then there's six total faces, you catch that? Each if there's one, that's one face, if you will. And if it's a cube, there's six total faces. There's a face down here below that you can't see. And if each face has four, that's six times four. So the surface area of the large is going to be 24 units squared. Now, if you reduce that, 6 goes into 24, 1 to 4 times. Okay, volume. Volume, remember, volume is just base times height. So ready? So our base is one unit squared and our height is one unit. So that first cube, it technically is, whoops, this should read volume. Excuse me. So change that volume. Change that volume. Those both should read volume. The volume of the small is simply one unit cubed. It's one cubed unit and that should be, you should be able to see that. The volume of the larger, remember it's area of the base, and the base is four units, and the height is two units, so four times two, that's going to be eight units cubed. So our ratio of our volume is one to eight. Now there's a really interesting pattern going on if you look very, very carefully. For all of these, I'd just like you to write the generic ratio x to y. In the first dimension, basically what we had was x to the first, y to the first. Notice 1 to 2. In the second dimension, if you take 1 and square it, you get 1. If you take 2 and square it, you get 4. So in the second dimension, the same ratio just gets squared. Second dimension gets squared. In the third dimension, you get cubed. So 1 times 1 times 1 is still 1. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So when you change dimensions, you change ratios. 
change dimensions. You change the ratios. Really important you understand that. Say it several times to yourself with me. When you change dimensions, change ratios. Change dimensions, change ratios. Again, change dimensions, change ratios. Why don't you get your reference booklet out? Find the very, very last page. This page right here. We're going to come to that, or second to last page. But I'm going to do a quick recap of what should be here, just in case you didn't fill it out, but you should have. The volume of a prism, volume equals base times height. Volume of a cylinder, base times height. Volume of a pyramid, base times height over three. Volume of a cone base times height over three, volume of a sphere, or pi r cubed over three. Ready, surface area of a prism, that's pH plus two bases. Cylinder, CH plus two bases. You're going to need to memorize this, so you should notice there's some repetition going on here. Pyramid, that was TL over two plus one base. Cone, CL over two. Instead of perimeter, it's circumference. CL over two plus one base. Last one. Surface area of a sphere four pi r squared. So please note these two are exactly the same. These two are exactly the same. Divided by three because its volume divides by three. This is exactly the same except p gets replaced by c. These guys are exactly the same, except once again, P gets replaced by C. And we are divided by two here because it's two dimensions. Okay, so let's recap right here what we just learned. We learned that similarity means congruent angles and ratios which are equal. Okay, so quick recap. Just put X and Y in all of these. When we're dealing in the first dimension, which is just length, it's going to be X to the first, Y to the first. Ratio of surface areas is X to the second, Y to the second. Volume, X to the third, Y to the third. Okay, so let's do one example together here. It says, the examples you've given are similar solids, a little similarity sign. Find the missing edge lengths, and then the ratio of the surface area and the volume, the ratio. So step one, we're just gonna find the scale factor, which is side to side. And our scale factor, is going to be edge to edge, 8 to 32. 8 goes into 32, 1 to 4 times. So our scale factor is 1 to 4. And that's going to qualify as our x to the first, y to the first. So surface area has to be x to the second, y to the second, which 1 times 1 is 1, 4 times 4 is 16. That's our ratio of our surface area here. Volume is going to be x cubed and y cubed, so 1 
times one times one is one, four times four, 16 times four again is 48. Now we're going to do one example together and then another example in your booklet. It says the scale factor of solid A to solid B is 2 to 5. If the volume of solid A is 64 centimeters cubed, what is the volume of B? Okay, key phrases, scale factor, underline that. That is one dimension. Really important to watch the keywords here. That means this 2 to 5, that's your straight up x to the first y to the first. I'll put that right here. Scale factor, one dimension is two to five. It's asking us if the volume of A to B, the volume, here's the volume of A and the volume of B. If the volume of A actually equals 64 centimeters cubed, it's asking what would the volume be here? Now be very careful with your ratios here. Whenever you're dealing with the changing of dimensions, I recommend you do all three dimensions straight off the bat. So that's 1D is 2 to 5. Your 2D, which is going to be area, is 2 squared, which is 4, 5 squared, which is 25, and then your volume, which is 3D, is going to be 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, 5 times 5 times 5, it's 5 quarters, it's 125. So the question is, we're ultimately going to do a ratio here. And we're doing the volume of A to B. And then we need a ratio. So the volume of A is 64. The volume of B, we don't know. That's what we're looking for. Now the question is, is which one of these ratios do we use? Do we use the 1D, the 2D, or the 3D here? Because we're dealing with volume, we have to use the 3D, which is going to be 8 to 125. Cross multiply. So we take a look here. We're going to do this together. And look on, no calculator watch. Very carefully. Come on, last preview note, grit your teeth and just do it without a calculator. The key to multiplying is not multiplying. It's factoring. So that's 8 times unknown. Notice I didn't multiply 64 to 125 because I'm just going to factor it. We're going to get rid of 8 here. Goodbye. Looky, looky, we can take that 8 into 64. And you're like, oh no, it's three digits of multiplication. You're going to do it wrong then because you're brilliant young people. Ready? Eight times eight. That's four carry to six. Eight times two is 16. Plus six, 22. Eight times one is eight plus two, 10. Woohoo, look at that. You are done. No calculator. You got a big number 1,024 cents per unit centimeters cubed. Ta da! All right. Go back to your preview notes. I think you really need one more practice there, which we're going to do right here. said the ratio of two prisms the ratio of the areas of two prisms is 25 units squared to 49 units squared what is the scale factor what would be the ratio of the volume 
the key word is highlight key concepts. It's ratio of areas, 25 units squared to 49. What is the scale factor? What is the ratio of the volumes? Okay, right above these words, realize the word ratio means one of these. Area is 2D. Notice we're in unit squared here. That's second dimension. Scale factor is one dimension. Ratio of volumes is 3D. There's your buzzwords. Ready? Right here, let's make three columns. One dimension. And two dimensions. And three dimensions. Let's label them. This would be scale factor. Scale factor is the side length to side length ratio of any solid. That's why it's one dimension. It's side length. Two dimension, of course, is surface area or area. Three dimensions, of course, is volume. So look very carefully. The only number you are given is in the two dimension. 25 to 49. So we're going to put right there. Whoops, I got my colors mixed up. I was using blue for 2D. Right there, 25 for 49. So we put 25 to 49. Now, we need to find both ratios. Now, look very carefully what we have. Basically, 25 to 49, x squared, y squared. Because why do I know it's square? Because we're in the second dimension. So x squared is 25 and y squared is 49. The way we move back and forth is the first dimension. I'm basically asking what was x and y? And if x squared is 25 and y squared is 49, then x is just 5 and y is 7. And then what's the ratio of the volumes? We do, and of course, that's x cubed and y cubed. So we're going to go 5 times 5 times 5. That's 125. And then 7 times 7 times 7. That's going to be 49 times 7. That would be about third grade math. You're going to do it longhand. 7 times 9, 63. 7 times 4, 28 plus 6, 340. 34, excuse me. And therefore, our ratio. For the volume is 125 to 343. What I recommend is you do a quick verbal recap of what we just did. And then do this one on your own. So pause the video, do the problem, check the video. Okay, welcome back. Let's see how you did. Did you actually do try to do this problem on your own, or are you just waiting for the video to restart? Don't be lazy. Do the problem on your own, then restart the video. If you just wait for the video, honestly, you're cheating, but it's not like a morally wrong cheating. It's like you're cheating your own learning experience, which should be valuable to you. Okay, let's see what you have. Scale factor, we're told that the scale factor immediately that's the 1D concept is 2 to 3. So that's our X to Y. We start with 1D, X to Y, 2 to 3. Now let's do the other ratios. 2D, which is X squared, Y squared, so that's going to be 4 to 9, 
and then 3D, which is volume, that's x cubed, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Now I have all three ratios. Okay, let's see what kind of information we have. The volume of a smaller solid, whatever it is, I'm just going to write small solid, is 16 units cubed. What's the volume of the larger solid? Now, if you did this, 16 over unknown equals 2 to 3, you would be wrong. And the reason why you would be wrong, that 2 and that 3 are the 1D ratios. But this is not a one-dimensional problem. We're dealing with volume. And volume is a three-dimensional ratio. So the ratio you should have used is 8 to 27. From here, you cross multiply. And if you were really on top of it and not being lazy, you would have done this by hand because the key to multiplying is not multiplying. It's factoring. My last crazy note. So I'm going to try to get all my little things in at one top here. So we divide both sides by 8. 8 goes in here twice. So my unknown is 2 times 57. I mean, 2 times 27. 54. Check units. Do, 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 do. It's just generic units. Units. Cubed. Ta-da! Your very last preview, no problem.